Yeah, it's 3.33, another one of those nights. I didn't go to bed till just about 11 o'clock, but I w woke up actually a couple of times before I finally got up at 2.30. <laughs> hmm. Yes, 3.33. Today, the title that I've selected is 3D and 4D Relationship to Life. When I think of relationship, my mind immediately goes to the one I do not have. <laughs> Is that not how humans have been conditioned to think? Have we not been well trained to see that, to see that lack? Did we design it this way or was it imposed upon us? There are those that advocate both points of view. Maybe they are both right. Do we have to have the right perspective in order to have the proper relationship to life? What is the right perspective? Yesterday, I spent about an hour and 20 to an hour and 25 minutes being interviewed by Peter Beamish. Uh, he is a professional uh, cameraman, and of course, the whole thing has to be edited. And as soon as it is available, I will make it available to each of you. And one of the things that came up in that interview was relationships. And of course, I went back to my long-standing desire to connect with my twin flame, my soulmate, whatever you want to call her. And he asked me, are you happy? Was one of his questions. Would you characterize yourself as being happy? And the truth is, no. I would characterize myself as being more sad than happy. And the sadness comes from, from the fact that I do, in fact, when I think of the word relationship, think of the fact that for a time now I have not been in a relationship and even some of the relationships that I have had over the years I realized were not the relationship that was fulfilling and empowering and uh, connecting it on all cylinders so to speak connecting at all levels and so that was where uh, my mind went yesterday in the interview it's where my mind still goes today <laughs> And it's where my mind has gone for a long time because I have longed for that reunion of soul with my other half, if you will. But both halves have to be whole in order for them to come together. It's part of the contradiction, perhaps. And when I started to, to sit down at the computer today and think about what I was going to talk about, I was thinking in terms of romantic relationships. But as I was writing the blurb and preparing for that, I realized that it's more than just a relationship on a romantic level or on a sexual level, sexual slash spiritual, that it's actually a relationship to life. And 3D has been a tremendous, albeit challenging experience for all of us in the respect that we have been trained to see the physical as the only reality. And I think that is by design, and I think we all designed it. And I also think it was imposed upon us, but it was a collective imposition. And there were certain factors, we call them the dark forces, or the elite establishment, or whatever you want to say, that sort of took control of this whole thing of, of helping educate sentient beingness with what we are not. And that's been an important part of our education. And we've reached a climax of that education, as many see it, as I see it, at this point in time. The 3D incarnation of spirit into matter has been occurring since matter first began appearing as a physical substance. 
And of course, we know that substance is just energy and it's an illusion, et cetera, et cetera. We know all, we know all of that stuff. We've been told all of that. And yet, it has been a frustrating incarnation because even those that seem to have all the marbles in their bag are frustrated because they can't get everybody to play by their rules. Nothing makes that more evident than the generation that we're living in right now. This 2011 certainly made it clear to those that want to rule the world with an iron fist and a combat boot that the people aren't willing to just lay down and follow their leadership blindly. In fact, the opposite is true. If anything has happened in 2011, the people have arisen up and say, no more of this BS that you're trying to shove down our throats. We don't want that kind of world. That's not who we are, and it's not the game we're going to play. And I know the elite are getting that message loudly and clearly across all channels that they are in touch with on the internet and all their spy programs and everything else. Many of us just simply don't care anymore. There's still a lot of people that are afraid, but there's a lot of, more, a lot of people that aren't afraid. And we know that they're spying on us, but it doesn't matter. We're going to stand in our truth anyway and live our lives according to the best we know how to live. And that is, from my perspective, the right perspective, to just get on with it. And that's the message that I was given last year after spending a whole year crying out to spirit, to God, when am I going to meet my spiritual partner? When, am I, when are we going to be connected? When can I start my, my real work? And the message between Christmas and New Year came, stop making excuses, run, just get on with it. And then I wrote that article that I mentioned again in the interview with Peter yesterday. I wrote that article about 2011, a year of massive visible changes. And for me, there have been massive, massive visible changes, even though they are not the, the changes that I would have envisioned and that I would have prophesied were going to happen by the end of this year. And then the year isn't over yet. <laughs> Almost there, but not quite. There's still a few more days left. But in any case, in my personal life, there have been massive visible changes. And, and the fact that I'm doing daily videos is one of those changes. I don't really care if it was imposed upon me or not imposed upon me. And when I say me, I'm including us, actually, because it was something that I think we selected and something that was imposed upon us by the same time. We chose the imposition. One of the questions Peter asked me, if I could go back now and sit on the bed of my 10-year-old self, what advice would I give? And as with several of his questions, I didn't have a, an immediate response because the question sort of caught me off guard. I wasn't anticipating that question, and therefore I didn't have an answer for it. But the answer that I think I gave... <laughs> was that I wouldn't give them any advice at all because everything that happened in my life, I believe, has been perfect. Even though I haven't liked everything that has occurred in my life, in retrospect, it has been perfect. Even the failures have been perfectly designed. Even the limitations and the times that I felt that I took the leap of faith and, and went out on a limb and the limb broke and I fell flat on my face. And, I didn't, and it didn't work the way I thought it was going to work. All of that is perfect. I take full responsibility for it. And I wouldn't go back and, and change people. So I, he asked, what would you tell people? You know, yeah, I'd like to take people and shake them. Wake up, will you please? But we're all on our path. We're all on our path of awakening. And the universe is conspiring on our behalf. Did you hear me? Not against us on our behalf for the full conscious awakening of as many as choose to go. 
And everybody, everybody is still in the running to make that choice. That's the relationship that we have in life, in time. And that's the 4D thing. 3D time is manifesting the length, breadth, depth of a thing. But the fourth dimension, we're realizing that time is now. And all time is present now. All time. That was a concept that we didn't really have until this modern uh, age of physics, where the physics became mystics, and, and they say that it's all the eternal now. Eckhart Tolle and, and some of the, the well-known mystics have been emphasizing the eternal now, the power of now, etc. Deepak Chopra and, and many others. It's all happening now. This is a scientific reality. It's all happening right now. It's not linear time. It's spiral time. And it just keeps going. But it's one spiral. And the spiral is all happening now. And we're aware that this relationship to life that we're having right now is a relationship that is waking us up. The dance between the light and the dark. The good, the good and the evil forces, if you will. Uh, God and, and, and the devil and all of these other mythological or not mythological uh, paradigms or expressions that we've used to define our journey. And our journey is coming for many of us to its conclusion. Actually for all of us there is a conclusion, there is a climax that's right here and we're in relationship to all that's happening. And it doesn't really matter whether we look at it as something we've chosen or something that's imposed upon us. We, wherever we are at either point of view, we need to know that that's where we are. And we need to be honest about it. We, we need to know whether we're playing the victim role or the creator role. And it doesn't really matter which role you play. Now, I know you're hearing, you hear people say that you can't, if you're going to play victim, you're going to stay in the victim role. Not at this time. All of the rules are suspended because there are no rules. Now it's just a time of observation and examination of this journey that we call human life. What it has taught us. It has taught us about lack. It has taught us to pay attention to what we don't have so that we would know what we want. Now, what I determined about relationships that I don't want is I don't just want a relationship for the sake of a relationship. I want a relationship that fires on all cylinders, that feels good to me. And when that comes, it may, she may walk off of a mothership, for all that I know, from the Pleiades somewhere and say, Ron, I've been watching you, and here I am. And, and my heart will go, boom, 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 boom. and I'll say, yeah, I've been waiting for you my whole life. Where you been? But I'm not willing to settle for just having a relationship to have a relationship. You see, the fact that I have gone through this lack and had opportunities to maybe get involved because here's somebody that's willing to love me. But it doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel right. And I have to learn to trust my feelings, trust my gut, follow my heart. Is it truth for me? Does it resonate with me? These are the more important questions that each of us need to ask ourselves. Because it's our life. And we are responsible for it. And we are being given the gift of the opportunity to expand, expand, expand. And that's called love. Expansion is called love. It's opening our heart, opening our mind, opening our lives to infinite possibility. This is where we are right now, as 2011 draws to a close. Humanity is there. You are there. I am there. We all are there together, making the choice of what kind of a relationship do we want in life and what kind of a world are we co-creating together. This has been a year of co-creation. Next year it will be co-creation on steroids, I have a feeling. Everything will be magnified. Everything will be 
put under the spotlight as we watch the dance and the duel reach its climax. That is our relationship to life. We are creators and observers. May today be a blessed day for you. Namaste.